Today we're going to go over how to use the thermal imager. This one happens to be a fluke, as you can see here, thermal imager. Okay, there's a few things we have to go over. Number one, anytime you're using the imager, your hand must be in this strap. So you could firmly hold on to the imager without dropping it. It is an expensive piece of equipment, roughly around $7,000. Okay, other features on here, we got our LCD screen. We have three buttons on the front, F1, F2, F3. The green symbol with F2 is the power button. You hold that in, the imager will beep, and the screen will begin to turn on, which I'll show you momentarily. And then I'll show you the features on how to change the color and how to change the actual image itself. Also, under here, we have an optional SD card and the power adapter. Over here is our focus knob. On the front here is the lens cover to protect both the normal lens and the IR lens. And then of course the green knob there or green button there is to take a picture or untake a picture. We can't store anything on this specific imager right now because we don't have an SD card in it. Okay, so the first thing you do when you're turning on an imager is you have to lift the lens cover up so that way you could take a picture. If you do not do this first, you will lose 10% of your grade. So remember, the lens cover must be lifted up first before you turn the power button on. Um, then you want to grip the imager with your hand here in the strap, like I'm going to do. Just going to get a better grip on this so I can adjust the focus. Hi, I see you all. Okay, so lens covers up. I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to push the power button in and hold it. Okay, should have heard a beep. It didn't beep this time. And now the, the screen will boot up. It'll calibrate. In the center there, you see a crosshair or a box. That is represented by that temperature right there in the middle with the black arrow going up and down. So right now it's fluctuating a little bit, but that's called spot temp. So that temperature that we see right there is 71.3 degrees roughly. Then you also see the color palette that I have chosen, 67 to 76 degrees, blue to red being the hottest, blue being the coldest. And now I'm going to attempt to take a photo. There you can see the top of my head. And I'm going to attempt to focus that a little better. Click the picture and it will maintain the image. And this is when you would bring it over to the instructor and show them what you took a picture of and what you're seeing is wrong in the image. Obviously in this image, it's just a reflection of me. Um, so there is no anomaly technically. And we'll go over what that means another time. To untake that picture, I just click the lens, I click the green button again on the front, and now I'm going to go over what these buttons do here. So if we want to change and we don't like this color palette that we see here, we hit the F2 button, a menu pops up. If we go to IR Fusion, we're literally going to change, and I'll show you here, going to change the picture. If we go up, it's now a picture within picture. The real image in the back and the thermal image in the front. And that's a little bit more solid and that's even more solid. So the picture in picture of three options. Full image, thermal image in the center with the background in the back, a little less transparent and even more transparent. And then if you keep going down, it's full image, a little less transparent and even a little less transparent. You can almost see what you are taking a shot of behind the image. Okay, now something else we could do, hit done here. Um, we can hit the menu button again, and we see palette over here on the left. We hit that, show you what that does. It changes the color palette of choice. That's black and white. That's rainbow. This is another color palette, another color palette, and the final color palette is like orange and black. 
I usually prefer this one, but right now this one's coming up really cool too. So you can see that as well. I can hit done and I'm good to go. Anything else here, I don't wanna mess with. Only the palette and the, and the IR Fusion. So now what I can also do is I can set these things up before I take the picture or watch. Like, well, hold on, it's calibrating. Click my image, ready? Click. Now I can also store it if I wanted to, if I had the SD card. Or I can go ahead and now, if I don't like the way it looks, I can adjust my image using IR Fusion. And I also can adjust if I hit the menu button to palette and I could change the color palette as well. And the main objective here is to get a good clear image. I'm doing the best I can because I'm doing this one handed. All right, so there you go. And you can see me there. And that's the basics of using the thermal imager. We'll have another video um, going over how to do a passive scan with the thermal imager, as well as an active thermal scan using the blower door in conjunction with the thermal imager. All right, we'll see you next time.